Look at the picture, church. Jesus lived a life. He kept the law, okay? Fulfilled the law, okay? Dies on the cross, raises, raises again, and then he gives you the completion of the law. seeing these three things come together as one and how perfect and complete the Godhead is. It's awesome, right? Yeah. So, so Jesus completely, God completely brought us back to himself through himself, by himself, completely independent of me. Like God said, hey, I'm going to bring these people back to myself through myself. That way none of my laws will be broken. You see what I'm saying? It's funny, I was talking with my friend the other day about this. You know, there's this idea that when you become a believer and your, your little intelligent mind starts spinning, so you know what you're talking about when you start thinking too much? Think to yourself, like I thought to myself one time, if God is so awesome and amazing and all-powerful, I guess dying on the cross wouldn't be a big deal for him because, you know, he's God. He could just die and get over it. You know, even though he feels the pain and get over it. But it actually is a big deal because God being perfect cannot become imperfect for us to be perfect. Jesus never lost his perfection. That's right. That's right. So the only way God could bring us back to himself, he had to do it by his law. You hear me? God can't just go, okay, never mind. You guys are redeemed. No, he had to go legally through his own law to set us free from sin, from the law that we broke. He had to legally, see, Jesus is our great lawyer, right? We all have a lawyer, the Holy Spirit living within us. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is your guide. He, he leads you. So you can go to that great lawyer to get yourself out of any misunderstanding that you don't know or any healing. You go to the one who petitions God for you. Amen? Because the Spirit searches the deep things of God and knows the heart of God. Now, when you petition the one who's within you who knows the heart of God, church, would you not have all things answered? Yeah. Would you not have all healing in your life, all prosperity? When you, you seek out to be led by the one who is of God, who searches the heart of God. Not just the heart, but the deep things. Church, what are the deep things? What are those? Well, the Holy Spirit knows. You want to know the deep things of God? Be led by the Spirit. Amen? Okay, Acts chapter 2. Someone said the day of Pentecost. Check it out. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all within one accord and in one place. All right? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind that filled the whole house um, that they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. Someone said fire. fire. Okay, so divided tongues, okay? Who's ever heard of speaking in tongues before? Okay, check this out. So when the Holy Spirit came, the first thing he did was take control of the tongues. Interesting, right? The book of James says this, the tongue is the smallest member of the body. A man who could bridle his tongue could bridle his whole body. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Imagine that. But, but the, the, the concept was is that no man can control his tongue. Right? But the Holy Spirit can. And if the Holy Spirit can control your tongue, then the Holy Spirit can have access to your body. That means prosperity. That means healing. Amen? If the Holy Spirit can bridle the tongue, can control the tongue, then he has the power to heal your body. So check this out. No, no, let's get even deeper. This means that when I speak in tongues, Paul says this, when, I'm, when you speak in tongues, you edify your body. You edify yourself. Right. What this means this is when you speak in tongues, you are actually edifying your physical body. Church, do you want to feel healing? You, you speak in tongues. You know, you know what I'm saying? So check this out. The Pentecost... Okay, is, it, it, is, a, is a picture from when Moses brought, brought the law. The Bible says that they were in the wilderness, right? And at, at uh, nighttime, it's okay, in the desert, it's like extreme. Super hot in the daytime, super cold in, in the nighttime. So you could imagine 
the oxymoron that it is trying to find perfect temperature in the wilderness. Not in the sun, you're dying, and at night you're, you know what I'm saying, you're freezing. But God's grace was sufficient, right? He provided a, a cloud to cover the sun. So, so the heat never got to the Israelites because God provided the covering for the sun where the, the heat didn't exhaust their bodies and cause them to die. Remember, when he brought them out, there was none people among them. Right, Remember? right. Okay, then at night, it was so cold that God provided for them a fire. Amen? And when the Holy Spirit comes, comes in as a rushing mighty wind and gives them tongues of fire. So check it out. The fire that was, was outside of the body in the wilderness has now come within us to dwell within us. Right. That fire of the Spirit is within you. Amen? And when you speak in tongues, church, you release that fire. Amen? <laughs> Don't picture fire dragon breath, but you know, <laughs> release that power. Yes. That fire. Amen? Somebody say amen. Amen. Okay. This is going to be some pretty in-depth teaching, but I want you guys to follow me if you can. Okay. So, um, it's definitely something you want to understand. Uh, if you give the Spirit your tongue, He will control or heal your body. Amen? That means you got to speak. you got to speak in tongues. you got to give the Spirit your tongues. The first thing the Holy Spirit did when He came was cause them to speak in tongues. Keep it in mind, when the early church started, 3,000 souls were added. When the law was given, 3,000 people died. Right. Okay? So there's a fulfillment that God is a redeemer, and he is a good God. Amen? So when the Spirit came, he gave, gave life. Amen?